The following is a presentation of TFNN. Trade what you see with Larry Pesavento. Call now, toll free at 1-877-927-6648 or internationally at 727-873-7618. Now, Larry Pesavento. Okay, looking good, Billy Ray. Feeling good, Lewis. Uh, we have to send some white out, white light out to Ed Dobson of the Traders Press. Uh, he retired a few years ago, still trading actively down there in North Carolina, but he had a stroke a couple of weeks ago. He's doing fine. He's on the mend, and uh, he's feeling good. So any white light you guys can send out would be great. Another very important thing, folks, on Wednesday, the 21st of August, Basil Chapman's opening call will have a webinar, and I highly recommend you listen to that, folks. There's more information in there in 15 minutes than you usually get in two hours anywhere else. So uh, I really highly recommend Basil's show on the 21st. Okay, we take a look at the German DAX. As you can see, we've been in a pretty tight trending range up here for the past few days, and following the channel very nicely. Uh, if we take a look at the FTSE, you're going to be uh, looking at pretty much the same thing. We've been in rally mode through here. So uh, both of those are lining up pretty good. And now I would like to take a few minutes to discuss something that I see that is probably not going to happen, but by golly, uh, it's got all the factors there. Folks, this is a chart uh, of last week when we were making the full moon here in the notes and bonds. You'll notice the bonds uh, made the one, two, three, four, five expanding triangle. That's also a three drive to a top pattern, spot on at 66.30, uh, 166.30. And uh, today we got as low as 163.14, whether that, that's just nothing more than a minor correction in a market like this. But it's got a lot of things that tells you that this thing that we're looking at with the negative interest rates is nothing more than a giant Ponzi scheme, folks. I mean, look, look. I mean, it's just to me, it's so apparent that I just don't. Uh, I mean, the reason why these guys are making money in the bonds is because the doggone things, when they go up, they make money on the capital appreciation. You buy a bond at 135, it goes to 165. You make the capital appreciation. That's where the money is. They've turned all of these bond speculators or all of these bond guys that are always worried about risk off, risk on, they've turned them into a, uh, uh, you know, long positions. And uh, th that's not going to be good when this thing turns over because it's been a straight-up move. And when you look at the you know, relationship between corporate bonds and the Treasury bonds, I mean, this is, this is a really uh, – it's a big thing. It, this is my opinion, of course, and it's wrong a lot, but <laughs> we are, that's what we're looking at right now. Anyway, just a lot of things that make you wonder. And if you remember, we had uh, Bill Meridian on. And uh, last week, and he talked to us about uh, the histogram in the uh, – hold on, let me get this up here so you can see it, which is basically uh, cycle high is usually done sometime in August. And whether it was done on the exact full moon or not, you know, I don't know, but nobody else does either. So uh, that's the good part. But this is set up to really be nasty, folks. I, I asked probably 15 people uh, over the last couple of days uh, – to explain to me what it means. And I know they give me that thing about the deflation. If you think there's deflation, why don't you go to the supermarket and uh, check out the uh, prices of most of the stuff that's there. There's a few things that are cheaper, but most of it is a lot higher. However, we do have a big problem with the uh, you know, with the Commodity Research Bureau Index, because if it breaks down from here, we're going to be looking at some major deflation in here. And that's something that the market doesn't want to uh, expect, and that, that could be uh, something that would happen. So let's pay pay close attention to that. That'll be one that will be very interesting, you know, to watch. That's uh, just from the cheap seats here in Tucson, Arizona. But to me, that bond chart is just looks like, uh, and I'm talking about the, the longer-term one, too, when you look at the... Uh, well, just look at the notes here. You can see what they did here 
on the long-term weekly. But does it make any sense to me? I asked some really smart people, and I asked if any of them would do that, and not one of them would uh, would give someone money and have them pay them uh, to get less money back. I mean, and I, I know uh, I'm going to shut up because I'm a technician. I don't know diddly squat about this, so I'm just going to forget about that and move on and talk about a few things that look interesting. We had a, we had a really nice move in stocks that we were expecting. There was nothing new about that. It started on Thursday and had a nice run. So what we're looking at now is a situation where how many days are we going to rally from here? Is it going to be two or three days? Is it going to be three to five days? We don't know the answer to that. So we're up, uh, we're up what, 300 points in the Dow at one time. So we're going to be bouncing around probably today. People will be looking at various things. But the key to this, one of the keys to what we were watching here was what was happening in the uh, the. Uh, place where it gets more pressed now than any place else, which is Hong Kong. You can see we had the big ABCD down there uh, at the 1.618 expansion, and that that was the morning where they during their their break when they came out they dropped the market uh, 700 points and then immediately snapped back. That was the bottom, and we've uh, been trading up sharply uh, last night. We were up over 500 points uh, in the Hang Seng. So that's definitely put some type of a bottom in. And if we look at the emerging markets, we did the same thing with the emerging markets. We completed a, a really nice uh, ABCD pattern I'll get this up here so you can see it uh, out of that triangle that we broke down from. So that should be uh, really uh, strong support down there at that 39 and change. And uh, so that does complete that. So the $64 question is how much we're going to rally from here in the next couple of days. Longer term, it's still very bearish. Uh, but shorter term, we could get a nice rally in here. And believe me, folks, the news that you see, you know, it, it just seems to run along with the market. That's basically it. Uh, another thing about the bonds, uh, just get back on the old bandwagon a bit. There's nobody on the other side of this trade, folks. I mean, I couldn't find anybody that uh, negated uh, uh, you know, negative interest rates because they said these central banks can do all the control they want. Well, that maybe is true, but when there's buyers, there's there's got to be sellers on the other side. Who's selling the stuff? Well, the people that are selling is the people that are printing the paper. The central banks selling their notes and bonds. So they're they're, they're not in any they're not in any danger of any any kind. Oh dear, I get myself in trouble, I guess. Let's move on here to a next one here. I wanted to mention the open interest in both the notes and bonds last week during that run up did not increase. There was no new big buying in there. Contra to what happened in the gold market, the gold market was still getting buying all during that time. Now, uh, we did uh, look at the platinum. Uh, that, that turned out to be a, a really nice trade. Let's get that up here because uh, we had a heck of a run. And with gold selling off as much as it did, uh, all platinum could do last night was back off about $4. So it's acting, you know, relatively well. So those are just a few of the ones that we're keeping our uh, keeping an eye on those. But this... Uh, this is what I'm seeing here early this morning. By the way, we're going to try to have Tim Bost as our guest here on Tuesday or, or Wednesday. Either it'll be Tuesday or Wednesday. It'll either be Stan Harley or Tim Bost on either one of those days. I'm trying to get that set up for tomorrow, and hopefully that'll work out all right. We all like to hear what those folks are talking about, Tim doing astrology and Stan being the consummate. Uh, a cycle guy, which is uh, really good. So we'll have those guys on uh, Tuesday and Wednesday to give us their idea of what's happening. So 877-927-6648. If you're not currently using the TAS Profile Scanner when looking at setting up your trading opportunities, then your arsenal is short a mighty weapon. The TAS Profile Scanner is a standalone piece of software that instantly filters over 2,500 global financial markets such as stocks, ETFs, commodity futures, and Forex. 
Headed by Steve Dahl, Taz understands that in today's technological world, the use of top flight software applications and technical analysis expertise is essential to successful trading in today's market. You also gain access to the webinar that Steve Dahl and Tom O'Brien just hosted, The Best Way to Use the Taz Profile Scanner to Profit. This webinar archive is available for all subscribers immediately upon signing up. All new subscriptions also come with a 30-day money-back guarantee, so you have nothing to risk. Start your subscription by visiting the front page of TFNN.com today and you'll find the TAS Profile Scanner under the Services tab. Sign up today. Are you in the market for buying or selling real estate in the Bay Area, including the surrounding St. Petersburg, Tampa, and Clearwater markets? Tiger Real Estate LLC is a firm that has extensive experience in the Tampa Bay Area. Whether you're looking to sell your current property for maximum value or you're in the market for a second home or investment property, Tiger Realty has the experience across all areas of real estate in the Tampa Bay area to help buyers and sellers make the most informed decisions across all price levels. From the price you should be paying per square foot in certain up-and-coming areas to the type of cash flow investment properties are capable of creating, Tiger Real Estate can help you make the best decision when it comes to all areas of the market. Before you make one of the biggest decisions of your financial future, call Tiger Real Estate L. LLC today at 727-329-8322 or email us at tiger at tfnn.com. That's 727-329-8322. Call us today. Many of our new listeners have heard about the Tiger's Den. The Tiger's Den is a lively community where professional traders and investors can meet, exchange ideas and information in a comfortable, moderated atmosphere. Hear all of the TFNN shows, plus see all of the charts as they happen live and have access to archives of all of those charts. You can test drive the Tiger's Den absolutely free for 30 days and greatly enrich your knowledge of these markets and how to make your money work for you. Details on the Tiger's Den are on the front page of TFNN.com. TFNN has launched our brand new website. You can still visit us at the same TFNN.com URL, but when you do, you'll see a new and improved homepage with a much simpler navigation, whether you're watching Tiger TV live in high definition or just accessing your newsletter subscriptions. We even have new pricing in six months and yearly options. Check out the new TFNN.com now and experience all the upgrades. TFNN.com, educating investors. Call now, toll free at 1-877-927-6648. Internationally at 727-873-7618. Okay, we're back, folks, and uh, I wanted to mention uh, someone's asked a question about the number of the dollars in bonds and stocks. I, I did a little search on that, and I came up with 40 billion. Oh, let's try it again. Four, 40 trillion is in the bond market. That's including the, the treasuries, not including the corporates. And then the, um, uh, the stocks was uh, 30 billion, so it's 40-30 uh, is what it said. Now, I don't know if that figure is correct or not, but that I Googled it twice, and uh, that's what I, I got. But there are a lot of people certainly in the bond trade. I don't think there's any question about that. Uh, I'll not worry about the other stuff. I, I shouldn't bring up the stuff about thinking because if you trade what you see and not what you think, you'll be far better off than uh, you know most people. Uh, John Murphy made a really interesting observation here in his thing for stock charts this past week I want to bring this up to you to let you see it this is uh, this is the from 2000 from 1999 to 2000 it shows the S&P versus the, the uh, 30 year treasury yield and you can see how it's inverted now with stocks being higher the yield going lower that's a very very unusual situation whether that means anything or not you know I don't know but uh, the fact that it's making that big a divergence is uh, I think of worthy of uh, paying attention to it if uh, nothing else so we'll be uh, pay watch it very very closely but uh, you know just as an experiment anybody out there that would like to have someone handle their money and then you pay them uh, and you don't you have no a guarantee well you have a 
some kind of a guarantee of getting your money back, but that doesn't make any sense to me, folks. Many years ago, you know, the 4% rule in the Treasury bonds is what the retirees, uh, you know, bank their uh, retirement on, and now they're getting, uh, you know, 2%. You know, they cut their, you know, they get a 50% tax cut or increase uh, based on that. So we'll see. All right, let's move on to the next one, and uh, let's see some of the things that we're paying attention to. We did talk about the uh, the uh, Hang Seng, and things have calmed down over there. That's another reason why the market was so strong. Uh, there were, the the uh, protests were very quiet, uh, probably because there were so many people that were there uh, with the Chinese army. Uh, we saw vote videos from our friends of the trucks and tanks there that you didn't see on in the mark in the other news. You just saw it uh, on the on the phones from the people that were there. So uh, someone asked about the question. Some of the research that I did with uh, uh, still doing with uh, John uh, Jameson over in the UK. I just wanted to show you the secret to some of the things we're doing. Here's one right here that this is the one that I developed on showing ABCDs on using cosines and tangents. Of course, if you're not involved with astrophysics and things like that, it's probably not necessary for you to understand that. But these are the things that you want to be watching. And folks, if you believe that, I still have two shares of the Brooklyn Bridge for you. Believe me or not. Keep it really simple, folks. You know, that's all you have to do. You know, this is not rocket science. Just keep it as simple as possible. That's really, you know, what you're trying to do as you walk through these uh, patterns that we look at quite a bit. Another another one that looks interesting on a really long-term basis uh, when you're talking about interest rates and stuff is we look at the long-term weekly chart of uh, the Dow Jones Utilities. You can see a 1, 2, 3 pattern uh, over 2016, 2017, 2019. Both of those ratios uh, have come in at 1.47. I think that is a, unusual. Um, someone's, uh, uh, they, oh, the British pound has reached the first target, Bill. Uh, we went up there. That was one of the trades that we looked at yesterday. We got up to one, uh, 12180. We got down to one, made the 60 points, which was uh, 350 bucks. So that was a shorter term pattern, but that's the one that we did, uh, I believe, here on I know we did on Friday, so let's as we were talking here. But the longer term here, if we take a look here at the, uh, let's get this up here so you folks can take a look at this. This is the uh, British pound uh, long term weekly. You can see the uh, old areas down there where it hit the uh, 120, 19, the actual low was 119 and change. We hit it twice, once in September right after Brexit, which was in June. Then we hit it in January. Then we had the huge rally all the way up to 143. We're down again. We hit the 120.20 was the low and uh, so it's holding up uh, relatively well from that in fact all of these uh, all of these uh, currencies are holding up extremely well in fact uh, I, well I focused most of the letter on the bond stuff because I had such a strong opinion on it just by looking at you know the charts I mean it just just doesn't make any sense anyway let's uh, Let's take a look at what's happened with those currencies because that U.S. dollar index has had a nice two-week rally, but uh, as it as it's and has completed that, you'll notice. Let's just get this up here so we can see it easier. This I can understand. Hold on, just a minute here. Click it, click. Okay, our uh, one percent retrace that on Thursday, tested it again on Friday. Uh, right now, we're trading right about that same level, so it hasn't really done very much. The The main thing is, is if you look at the June bottom, you'll see the 135 pattern that was there. We had the higher bottoms, each one of them coming at a, either a perfect ABCD or a 61% retracement. So all we have to have to get this thing moving in the U.S. dollar index to the upside is a move above 98.40, and it's going to be a gone goose to the upside, and that means that you Euro is going to be taking a vacation below the uh, 110 level because that would really put the put a lot of a lot of heat on the uh, in the, on the euro and the euro's not bouncing very much. I mean, you know, it's still it's still holding its own, but frankly, it just does not have a lot of a uh, lot of friends down in this area. We'll just bring this euro up and you'll see, you know, where we are. We're trading right about here this morning, and uh, you know, it doesn't take much. You know, to push this thing down, uh, you know, anything below 110.50 would be a sign that you're you're ready to move to the downside. So that's the one thing that I would be, you know, kind of uh, watching as you uh, as you look at some of these things. So keep a, keep a close eye on it.
Okay, someone's asked a question about one of the things we're keeping a close eye on, and that is a natural gas. Folks, I really do like the natural gas, but it's not quite ready yet. We're down just a little bit today, and I, I think uh, maybe in the next two or three days we'll have a pretty good chance, you know, to enter it, but it really hasn't done that. Uh, second question is on the platinum. I, I've mentioned this morning to raise your stops up, you know, so that you protect a at least a nice uh, uh, profit, at least $500. It's up about 800 right now, so I would do that. Uh, the copper, copper the metal. Uh, boy, that's one that's interesting. Let's pull, put this up here for our good friend Marshall so we can take a quick look at it here. Copper the metal. Here we go. HG. There we go. Get the daily... And it's holding its own, you know, it really is. Hold on just a second here. Let me do the weekly here, Marshall, because that is the easiest one, you know, to get your handle on because it's set here. That's a good one. Hold on just a second. You can see where we are here. Uh, this level of uh, 255, you, you, we've hit it twice. We hit it once last year, and we made a slightly lower low two weeks ago, and we've held that low, and the market's been going sideways ever since. And with a little bit of a downward bias, the low has been uh, 252, where we took that other low out. We rallied a little bit. We're up a, a tad today. Uh, I don't have a really clear pattern to buy it yet, but if you had to put a gun to my head, I would be a buyer of the copper, but not until it retests the 255, because we made that low down there five days ago, rallied seven, and we've gone sideways. So let's wait on that one. 877-927-6648. Larry Pesavento has just started his brand new service, Fibonacci 24-7, and he's already delivering content to his subscribers on a daily basis when the market's opened and even on weekends. Each Monday, you'll receive Larry's written report that provides detailed commentary and a summary on the charts and videos that Larry sends out. And throughout the week, when warranted, Larry will send out via charts or videos or both the key markets that he is watching during the day. This will be up-to-the-date active trading information that will help you in your daily trading. In Larry's first week alone, he sent out 25 charts, six videos, and a full report to his subscribers in just one week. If you're a technical trader that uses patterns and retracements to trade, then Larry's service Fibonacci 24-7 is something that you must try. Right now, new subscribers can get a full 30-day money-back guarantee. With nothing to risk, sign up now to Larry Pesavento's Fibonacci 24-7 by visiting the front page of TFNN.com under Trading Newsletters. The Path of Least Resistance is David White's daily trading newsletter, and if you're looking for active trading ideas, then now's a perfect time for a 30-day free trial to this powerful daily trading advisory service. David uses his years of trading experience to offer his subscribers his trading ideas each morning in his Path of Least Resistance newsletter. Using a combination of equity trades along with options, David keeps his subscribers up to date with all pertinent market information with intraday afternoon updates when warranted. Don't miss out on this great chance to get a 30-day free trial to David's daily newsletter, The Path of Least Resistance, with no obligation to pay anything. David has been delivering solid recommendations for his subscribers recently, and if you'd like to see the type of newsletter he delivers every morning, then visit the front page of TFNN, and you'll find The Path of Least Resistance under Trading Newsletters. For all the details, and to start your 30-day free trial today, log on to TFNN.com now. TFNN is excited about our new software charting program, The Art of Timing the Trade Charts. In collaboration with Tom O'Brien and using his best-selling book, The Art of Timing the Trade, Your Ultimate Trading Mastery System, David White has programmed an outstanding piece of software that will complement any trader's methodology. Using this first-of-its-kind program, The Art of Timing the Trade Charts allows you to scan thousands of stocks for Fibonacci formation setups, including Gartley's, ABC's, Butterflies, and much more. The Art of Timing the Trade Charts is designed 
designed to help you when scouring the markets for stocks just beginning to form the trading patterns that many investors spend days, weeks, or even months searching to find. And right now, we're offering licenses available at only $79 a month. We are so confident that you're going to love this new charting software that will even give you a 30-day unconditional money-back guarantee. Don't miss out on this incredible new piece of software. Get your copy of The Art of Timing the Trade Charts today by visiting tfnn.com. This segment is brought to you by Think or Swim. For more information, just click the Think or Swim banner on the front page of TFNN.com. Okay, we're back, folks. Uh, we took a look at the copper. I think it weighed a few days. We had a five, five to six day rally, then we had a little three day pullback. So there's no pattern there to really look at it. All you have is that support down there at 252. We're trading nine cents higher. That's too much to risk, in my opinion. So I wouldn't do it. I've been asked to take a look at the high grade bonds, uh, i.e., junk bonds, high yield. <laughs> not high grade. <laughs> I, when I see the HYG, I auto, 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 automatically think of high grade, but it's high yielding bonds. And uh, they did not uh, have the same type of move that we had in the treasuries. It was measuring major the treasuries. And that was due to that, the, the news that they got on that uh, uh, two year, 10 year uh, difference. That was really big in the news. And if you check that top, that we made on the 25th in bonds, which was Thursday at the full moon. That was exactly when the bottom mark, the bottom in the stock market turned on exactly in that five-minute bar. When that happened, when that spread turned, that's when the market turned, and it's continuing to uh, move in that direction. So whether that means anything or not, you know, we have to uh, wait and see. But that's neither here. I know I put too many charts out here, but this is what I have to talk about because. I understand the charts. I don't understand some of the things that go on between those lines, but the lines themselves, they don't give me much trouble. Folks, look at look what they've put over on us in hogs and corn here. I mean, just, just a few months ago in May, you know, they said, oh, the corn's underwater. There's not going to be any corn. What does corn do? It rallies a dollar a bushel and then goes down and collapses below uh, previous lows below the cost of production. Same thing in hogs. There's a big Asian uh, epidemic in China. China's going to buy all of our hogs. So hogs rally 18 cents. And guess what happens? They drop 25 cents. So this is why I'm a technician. I went through this stuff so many times through these things. I mean, it's just uh, I was thinking of them over the weekend as I was preparing the newsletter, all the different things that they've tried to feed me. You know, I remember – in 1989, when CNB, this was one of my most memorable ones, 1989, it was right around uh, Christmas time, and they were having a special from the Imperial Palace, and they put a $1,000 bill, the picture of um, uh, Sam and P. Chase uh, on it, and they put it down on the sidewalk, and you know, it's the same size as a regular bill, maybe, maybe a tiny bit bigger, and they said, this is how much real estate you can buy here for $1,000. The Nikkei was trading at 39000 and uh, they were talking about the Nikkei at 50 or 60,000. It topped on the 29th of December 1989, and it never, it's never even came in close to 39,000. Went all the way down to 7,000. When it was a 7,000, they were talking it was going to go to 3,000. I remember that very clearly because it was Barton Biggs that made that call. And uh, from there, which was the bottom, 6,900, we rallied up to around 28 or 29,000, about halfway back. But uh, just one after another, I mean, it's just amazing. So those the, the charts follow the trend. I mean, that, well, I don't mean that. I mean, the news follows the trend. So when you see these things going, you know, that's it. Here's a great quote from good, our good friend David. Unless you completely disregard all news, reports, tips, corporate statements, crop situation, other types of news, you will be unable to get the best results from your market operation. Richard D. Rykoff, one of the great people from the 1920s, 30s. Uh, so that's important. And I really try to do that. Uh, uh, you know, because I, I, I really have a hard time believing them because the stuff that they put out for a perfect example is what they're doing with General Electric. I don't know what's going to happen with that situation. But when someone comes out with an opinion, you know, that's certainly OK. But you know that the low on that day at seven dollars and something in General Electric was exactly I mean, to the exact uh, two cents of the exact 78 percent retracement of that move. Now, how can that happen? 
you know, so I don't know. We'll see. Anyway, those are some of the things. Folks, if you want to call in, it's 877-927-6648, and it would really be helpful if you did because preparing for this show and doing it is not an easy gig, and uh, I would really uh, like to get some feedback from you folks to see if uh, you can uh, – you know, give me some questions and things like that. In fact, one of the questions coming in uh, right now is uh, about the VIX index. I'll get this up. You'll be able to see here that we were expecting the VIX index to be down uh, this week. We put it down in here. Should I don't know where if it's trading at 16 yet, but it should be pretty close to that. Then the reason for that, folks, is the way the market turned. We we were well. It, it just comes off these numbers sometimes, and usually when the market's the most bearish or they're giving the most bearish news that's when it usually happens and the same thing on the upside the most bullish news happens at that time so that was one of the reasons why we don't think there's anything really dramatically wrong with the stock market right now because that VIX has not been doing that uh, we'll see that <laughs> okay okay so crude oil heating oil uh, crude oil is up to a very very let's get the crude oil up that's really interesting because we're really near something interesting in the crude oil right now let's get this up here take a quick look at it as you can see here in crude we've had a 135 pattern to the downside and the key level to watch today is uh, the 5600 level. That's going to be a very interesting one because if we clear 5650, we got a chance to break out to the upside here, and crude oil could get uh, pretty bullish. But it's got to clear 5650 without any trouble at all, and then it's got a chance to do something. We see the same thing happening if you go into the other part of the uh, complex for the uh, oil and stuff. Is if you take a look at the uh, gasoline, you're seeing exactly the same thing happening in heating oil. Let's do heating oil first since I got it up and running. You can see the same thing is happening with that 135 pattern. But you have to have some strength here in order to get it to turn because the trend has been down now for a month and it's been following the perfect 135 pattern from uh, Bill and uh, Roy Longstreet uh, quite nicely. So it's still in a downtrend. That's the way I would be uh, be watching that uh, for, for a period of time. Okay, uh, going getting back to the currencies. Uh, we want to take a look at the uh, Australian dollar here, folks, because it's trying to I – mean, this is a uh, really long term going back uh, last 12 months uh, in the Australian dollar. Uh, get this up. It's a great one to trade, too, because it has good volatility. But we've had a bottom that was made down there on August the 8th. Uh, we had a really nice rally of a little over – 175 pips we backed off over a nine day period and could hardly move down below the 67 level we could we couldn't even get below 6755 uh, so this is acting relatively bullish folks uh, so we'll see if that's going to happen we see the same thing occurring if we take a look at the Canadian dollar it's the same thing in the Canadian dollar it's also finding some really good support down at these levels what this could be telling us is is the fact that this U.S. dollar index at that 98.40 level is going to have a whole lot of trouble to get through there. Because if you look at the six major cross rates, that's it. Now, don't forget, there's there's 29, uh, I think there's 29 countries in the eurozone. But, you know, uh, when you look at the big six, that really covers about all of it. You're talking at the pound, the yen, the euro, the Swiss, Canadian, and the Australian dollar. That, that, that takes care of almost all of it. But you've got these other cross rates and other countries. Countries that are see, we'll see what's going on. Yes, the ruby. The, we're really watching natural gas really closely, and I, I mean, believe me, I really want to buy this. <laughs> it's a question of, uh, you know, when am I going to buy it? And I'm waiting for one more washout. I'll show you what I'm looking for right now because we were down uh, quite a bit a little while ago, and we've already started to come back. You see, I was looking for that market to get down to maybe uh, 211, 212 today, and uh, we didn't quite make it. So we'll see. 877-927-6648. If you're in the CD market and looking for a secure investment, the Tiger First Mortgage Program may work for you. The security for these first mortgages are building lots in the Tax Opportunity Zone in St. Petersburg, Florida. The Tax Act of 2018 set up tax-free zones across the country where you can build and hold for 10 years and pay no tax on the profits, which makes these lots valuable. The investment is anywhere from $30,000 to $75,000.
The interest paid is 7% yearly paid on a monthly basis. According to Bankrate.com, the best rate for a four-year CD in the country as of February 20th is 3.1%. A $50,000 investment at a normal four-year CD rate of 3.1% would give you income of $1,550 per year or $6,200 over the four-year period. That same $50,000 investment in a Tiger First Mortgage Program would give you $3,500 per year or $14,000 over the four years. Which would you prefer, $6,200 or $14,000 of interest on your investment? If you would like more information about the Tiger First Mortgage Program, you can call me at 877-518-9190. That's 877-518-9190. It's amazing to think that Tom O'Brien started his weekly gold report 17 years ago with the first issue published April 7th, 2002, when gold was trading at under $300 per ounce. Gold peaked at more than $1,900 in 2011, and after spending many years consolidating at lower prices, gold may be poised for its next big run. Tom O'Brien publishes his weekly gold report every Monday morning for subscribers, consisting of coverage of the XAU, HUI, GDX, the dollar, bonds, South Africa, African Rand, as well as 25 different mining equities with specific buy-sell recommendations. As of April 1st of this year, the Gold Report currently has eight active positions with an average unrealized profit of almost 8% for each open trade. New subscribers get a 30-day money-back guarantee so you have nothing to risk. For all the details and to start your Gold Report subscription today, visit the front page of TFNN.com. Don't let gold's next big run pass you by. Sign up today. Will the S&P 500 continue to climb? For bold trades on U.S. large cap stocks in either direction, trade SPXL, SPUU, or SPXS. Direction's daily S&P 500 bull and bear leveraged ETFs. Direction leveraged ETFs. An investor should carefully consider a fund's investment objective, risks, charges, and expenses before investing. A fund's prospectus and summary prospectus contain this and other information about Direction shares. To obtain a fund's prospectus and summary prospectus, call 866-476-7523 or visit directioninvestments.com. A fund's prospectus and summary prospectus should be read carefully before investing. An investment in the funds is subject to risk, including the possible loss of principal. The funds are designed to be utilized only by sophisticated investors such as traders and active investors. Distributor for Side Fund Services, LLC. The Bull Bear Binary Option Hour, next on TFNN. Okay, folks, <clears throat> I just posted a chart there of the uh, natural gas. You can see what we were looking at uh, for a possible buy down there. We missed it. I think it'd just be patient here. Still a little early, uh, especially early in the week. We ought to give it a little bit of a uh, little bit of a time to uh, uh, see if you can get. I did want to show you something here uh, in the hogs because this is a this is a perfect example of uh, you know you learn some things as you go through uh, your trading life and you remember the. Deutsche Bank thing when they offered a the discount in January when it was trading at 20 a 35 percent discount for buying it which meant you could buy it for 70 buy, or 17 and now it's trading for six and change this is the same thing they fed us in the in the hog market look at the high that was made on April the 15th when there were not going to be any hogs in the world and here we are now half that price almost and look at you see where we are this is going to be a pretty good interesting spot here you know to take a look at uh, you know what we're watching here if you'll bear with me here one second uh, I have to do something I just heard my limit minder go off and there it is that's what I wanted to see okay Marshall heads up Marshall heads up Marshall heads up Marshall okay let's move on here uh, to the next one over here and uh, see what we've got going uh, that is the uh, uh, you know, Bill, I don't know anything about the cost of production on hogs. Uh, you know, I'll ask Rich Anderson to come on uh, either Thursday or Friday or maybe a spot thing because he knows all that stuff. He doesn't do – he raises cattle and wheat and sorghum and stuff, but uh, he doesn't do hogs. But it's – hog production is very, very expensive because hogs are very sensitive to disease. And I know that we have a lot of hog farms right here in Arizona, even though it's 105 today, they have uh, really – really incredible uh, facilities over here about uh, 80 miles from where we live that are just like a hospital zone. I mean, you can't get in there without uh, having a uh, 
you know, really uh, sterile sterile environment. They really watch it closely, just like chickens. You know, you can lose a whole whole herd of chicken, or I don't know if it's a herd or not, but a whole flock of chickens uh, if the disease comes in, and that makes it uh, really uh, quite uh, quite tough. The other one that I uh, where is that? Dog on cattle chart because I wanted to show that one because it was really interesting because it had a total collapse in the ca cattle market and uh, this might be it hold on yes here it is here's the Christmas cattle now here's one this is one look at this folks in April the cattle selling for 125 we're selling a 25 percent discount now down at the 1.618 expansion at 103 okay I mean. There's where you want to buy the cattle. You know, you buy them. You you know, buy them, and if they go below 103, you're wrong. But it's much better to buy them down here than you know. Look at the double top up there. You go up there and make a little slightly higher high, and then roll over. That's what a double top is all about. You know, that's what's telling you what the news was going on. I mean, you know, you don't have to know a lot of that stuff. <laughs> anyway, that there's my two cents worth. We'll just move on uh, to that. I wanted to cover. One other one, that is the Dow Jones Transportations, because uh, that came down and made some really strong support here beyond cows. Oh, very good. Oh, by the way, you know, I found out that uh, uh, Burger King has come out with a, uh, a synthetic hamburger called the Impossible Whopper. And, uh, and I think the, the buzzword on that is impossible. I don't know how you can take – well, let's <laughs> – I mean, they got to be putting a lot of chemicals in that stuff if they can make grains taste like meat, and I guess they can, so who knows. Not to worry, Larry. I eat meat three times a day, so and I've lived this long. Hopefully, I'll keep going on for another few months or years or decades. Who knows? Okay, we have uh, – let's see. Get up here. I wanted to, Someone asked a question about the uh, – Something that was in the Elliott Wave newsletter. I uh, I get this from one of our good friends here. I'll bring it up here to show you. He's making comparisons here, folks. I'm not making any inferences here. It's just a comparison of times, and I just wanted to show you. You'll see uh, 1921 to 1929, that was a peak. 1982 to 2009 was a peak. 1982 was a major bottom in the market, folks, because that was when the bonds bottomed. The bonds bottomed on the 9th of uh, August, I believe same time as stocks, and of course bonds kept going up uh, until last year. We haven't taken them out on a capital basis, but on a yield basis, we certainly have had, so we'll see. Uh, regarding real estate and stuff like that, folks, I, I really, that's so far over my pay grade that I, I don't get involved with it. It's just... Uh, it's just not much I can deal with as far as uh, the other stuff. <laughs> well, it's, uh, that, it's right, Bill. It's like anything else. You can always make a prediction. You might be wrong six or seven times. In fact, one of my favorite quotes from Paul Tudor Jones was in the Wall Street Journal. They were interviewing and saying what a great trader he was and how he, uh, how he said uh, how important it was that uh, we had a uh, – uh, you know, a top in the, in the bond market and, and uh, how he called it perfectly. And, and Tudor Jones said to the reporter, you should accurately report this, young man. And he says, what do you mean? He said, well, you should say that Paul Tudor Jones act actually forecast the exact bottom in the Treasury bond market after missing it the previous six times. And that's what it's all about. You go in, you take a slice of the cheese, and if it's if you get out of there without the trap slamming on it, you're okay. But you might have to take a lot of slices of that cheese before you get it right. And speaking of cheese, that's what we're looking at in the Treasury bonds. This could be a trap. I don't know. But it may not. I don't know. We'll have to wait and see. The next two, day, next two or three days will tell the tale in that for sure. So that's what we'll watch on. I wanted to let you know here. Here, uh, here is one that I was going to bring up, but I decided not to do it just because of the fact that uh, I don't like trading these ETFs. But this uh, this TPT used to trade at 360, folks. It's now at 23, and uh, you know it looks if this pattern is correct, you might want to take a look at that uh, TPT because that's the equivalent of uh, going uh, short bonds, uh, and at the, of course the TLT is the opposite of that, and that one looks like a you know, the parabolic move, if we get that up here, you'll be able to see the last time we had one of those parabolic moves was back in 2014. We went from 102 up to 138, 138 back to 112. This time we've gone from 108 
you know, to 148. That's the biggest move. And of course, we went up into new high ground. So whether that's going to be a, a major top or not, well, we'll know here in the next couple of days. That's really all you're trying to do is to line these up. But uh, I'm not making a recommendation on cattle, folks. I am not doing that. Uh, uh, we just closed out a profitable trade in the British pound. The the, the uh, platinum is doing well, so all of that makes it uh, line up uh, okay. So that's really what we're looking at here this morning. And remember, we're going to try to have um, Stan Harley on this week, Tuesday or Wednesday, and also Tim Boss Tuesday or Wednesday to uh, see. And hopefully, we'll get a cameo appearance by Shane Smolian if he sees something really good because uh, he's, he's he's on top of these things folks on what the Fed is doing and uh, you know we'll, uh, we'll watch that as we go through here. Boy the hour went pretty fast today even though we didn't have any guests calling in but I would really appreciate it if you start uh, calling in with a few questions here and there and if I don't have the answers I'll make them up as I usually do and also alert you to that effect. So we'll keep blowing going as we look at some of these things. So we got the, the uh, music is about ready to start for the final break, and then we'll talk about the most important things, you know, that we're looking at. I think the interest rate thing is the one you want to really watch because the whole world is keeping an eye on that. 877-927-6648. I'm certain you are or strive to be one of the best of the best at everything you do in life. It's the most common trait that we tigers and tigresses share. If you're looking to become the best of the best when it comes to managing your money, let me teach you to do what most wealth managers tell you can't be done, which is how to time the markets. I'm Steve Rhodes, author of Mastering Probability, and for the last 12 months, Timer Digest has been tracking my newsletter signals, which have earned me the ranking as their number one market timer in the nation for the S&P 500 for the last 12 six and three months timer digest also ranks me as the number one market timer for gold as well the fact is markets can be timed and i'll teach you the exact set of tools that i use that has transformed me into one of the best at what i do sign up for mastering probability today by clicking on the newsletter tab on the homepage of tfnn.com and get immediate access to workshops where i take you step by step how to use an extraordinary set of tools as well as provide great market calls too. sign up today if you haven't checked out the newsletters page of TFNN.com, what are you waiting for? All of the TFNN newsletters are informative, up-to-date, affordable, and a must-have for every trader looking to gain a competitive informational edge in today's markets. TFNN newsletters cover every aspect of the markets to offer you the very latest in market news. Plus, new subscribers get to test drive our newsletters risk-free for 30 days. From all aspects of the markets, including stocks, bonds, metals, commodities, and tech, there's a newsletter to fit your needs exclusively from TFNN. Stay informed each day you trade and get that competitive edge that will help you stay ahead of the game. Visit our newsletters page by going to TFNN.com and click the newsletters button near the top of the page. TFNN.com, educating investors. Since 1984, Basil Chapman has been using the Chapman Wave methodology to advise traders of his expert market opinion. While originally hand-drawing charts from the late 1970s into the 1980s, Basil noticed that prices under most circumstances virtually always had a certain number of legs to the upside before declining sharply. Later, Basil found the computer software, which included the standard market technical indicators, enhanced the degree of accuracy in calling price turns, as well as market trend calls. Thus was born the Chapman Wave sequence. Using the Chapman Wave methodology along with other indicators, Basil Chapman advises his subscribers of his expert market opinion each market day with his opening call newsletter. Right now, you can get a two-week free trial to the opening call, Basil's daily trading newsletter, by visiting the front page of TFNN.com. Cancel at any time during that trial and pay absolutely nothing. Get your two-week free trial to Basil's newsletter, The Opening Call, today by visiting TFNN.com. This segment is brought to you by Think or Swim. For more information, just click the Think or Swim banner on the front page of TFNN.com. OK, 
Okay, folks, we're back, and uh, I think one of the most important things to pay attention to is we've had a – we're in the third day of a rally now. Uh, we're still in a bear market, a short-term bear market, of course, from the high in August the 5th, so we want to see what the next thing is going to be. That will probably be related to the next tweet, whether it comes out of uh, Taiwan – Beijing, uh, uh, somewhere in New York, Washington, D.C., whatever it is, it'll probably move the market three or 400, 500 points. Who knows? We are going to see expanded volatility, so get used to it. We haven't seen it yet in the foreign, foreign exchange markets, but I think we're going to see it. That would certainly be true if the euro gets below 110. That means that the euro is breaking down and the U.S. dollar index is really starting to move. And it still is the king of the currency. So if that happens, uh, we need to alert you to that effect that, that something really big is happening. Right now, the euro is holding okay. The dollar is still in that trading range, but that could change at any moment, and we want to be alert to that to see what's going on. The market has held up incredibly well during this last um, uh, three or four weeks, folks. We've had one of the largest moves down ever. I think 900 points, so 800 points was the fourth largest ever, but um, it held up and came right back, and that's a, that's a really good sign. Now, the key to that, I believe, was the night of the Hang Seng, because we were, we were talking about that and the way that they did it, you know, right after the dinner break, they drop at 700 points, and boom, you came back in, and just like they did with the Swiss franc and the euro a couple of years ago. Nothing you can do about that, but that's the way the game is played sometimes, so we need to, you know, pay close attention to it. So that's really what we're, you know, keeping an eye on here this morning. I think there's pretty much covers it all. We'll see you on the flip-flop tomorrow. Hopefully we'll either have Stan Harley or Tim Bost will be our guest and uh, always good information coming from those folks. And keep your cards and letters coming in and be sure that you call in with some questions. It would be very, very helpful. And remember, Basil's show on Wednesday, the 21st at uh, 5 o'clock. Don't forget that, folks. That's really worth every, every penny you can spend. Really, it is. 